Hello everyone, my name is Selena Lopez and today I'm with Unidos por la Musica here with Oscar. How hi, are you? Hi Selena, good. Doing great. Good. So we're here to recap the last three months of Unidos por la Musica and what they've accomplished in the last three months. So I'm really excited because it feels like yesterday we were just doing this interview and here we are sitting again. Yeah, ending 2022. We're ending 2022. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. a couple of days away from, from that. So we're really excited to share with the community, what we've done, that impact for the last quarter, and, and kind of touch a little bit on the whole year, you know, what happened here at Unidos por la Musica. So let's get started. Are you ready? Let's, let's do it. Okay. So I want to start first with your biggest program, the Food Bank. Mm -hmm. What impact have you done here in the Inland Empire? For the last quarter, we were able to give away uh, uh, 1.3 mil in goods given wow. to the entire region of the Inland Empire, which is R Riverside and San Bernardino. And that is food and uh, essentials, home goods as well. Um, and we were able to do so with the help of, um, you know, Cricket Wireless, William Sonoma, Walmart, Costco, uh, Amazon. Uh, so those are the main sponsors of this program and without their help, none of this will be possible. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as I said it before, you know, we're really, um, you know, that, that program alone, it's, it's, it's the highest uh, demand of Unidos por la Musica because we still see a lot of people who are not working or under, you know, just working part time and, or people who are moving from another county into the Inland Empire and just inflation in general. So right. everything that is happening around our community, you know, our nation uh, is indeed affecting our families. So the food bank, we get families from all backgrounds. Um, you know, we don't turn anyone away unless we were out of food, which has happened in the past. You know, unfortunately, um, you know, there's, there's, there has been times that we have a huge line, but uh, we're not able to, um, you know, fulfill that demand. And, you know, despite the fact that we're out there in the community um, trying to get all the resources that we're able to get so that we can give to the community. So every time I sit with you, Oscar, I do see your sponsorships right. increasing, right. right? So level of corporate right. coming to you and say, I want to be part of your mission and what right. you're accomplishing. So right. tell those who are watching, those corporate sponsors, how do they join this mission with Unidos? Well, definitely, you know, they can visit the website or, or follow us on Instagram and they can send us a, 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 an email and, and, and see how we can collaborate. But um, I, I think that um, especially because what's happening, uh, you know, and, and like I said, in the community and the nation with inflation and prices going up and everything, I think everybody's, um, you know, touching their heart and trying to see how can we give back to the community. And, you know, and we applaud those corporations that um, are helping us. Like I mentioned, Cricket Wireless, Will and Sonoma, you know, they keep coming back and saying, hey, our job is not done. You know, we're not just giving you a, a, you know, a check for this quarter or this year and then, you know, good luck to you. No, that, uh, what we like about these sponsors is that they keep coming back because they, they keep seeing the, the impact that we're having in the community. So um, inviting all other corporations to come and help out and, and, and help us make a difference. You know, there is a lot of families in the community who are not working, like I said, you know, there's still a lot of families affected with COVID and, and, and just in general, in general, you know, we're, we are in winter season and, you know, a lot of people are getting sick with the flu, um, you know, and if you're not eating healthy, if you're not, you know, taking care of yourself, you know, your body is taking the heat and it's taking you longer to re recuperate. Right. And, you know, that'll take us to our next segment, you know, as far as your health program and what mm -hmm. you're doing, all the initiatives that you have with the partnerships right. that you have. So tell us a little bit about, first of all, the partnerships that you have for your health program right. and exactly what is your focus and what has your focus been in the last quarter? Well, the last quarter, uh, we're now in open enrollment. So this mm -hmm. is a time for everybody to enroll, to change. You know, if you, you were not happy with your provider, uh, you can change now, right? But um, aside from that, you know, we've been working, um, you know, heavily in the, in, in the communities with a Medi, uh, Medi-Cal. Um, you know, again, there's still a lot of mis misinformation, a lot of people not too sure where to go to enroll or do I qualify, you know, because of my income, because of my um, legal status, is that a public uh, charge? Is that gonna mm -hmm. affect my green card in the future? <laughs> um, all of that. So, um, you know, the focus has been, first and foremost, education. You know, come to our workshops, come to see us, talk to our counselors, uh, ask questions. You right. know, the, the best thing that you can be informed and you can break the, the, the barrier is, let me ask questions. Right. So once we are, uh, are able to do that, then we want to help you enroll with our counselors and whatever program it is that, that, that you qualify. 
So I see that your partnership with Inland Empire Chai which stands for Inland Empire Coverage and Health Initiative. I know that you've been partnering with them for a very long time, but tell the community that perhaps doesn't know, what exactly is your partnership and what do you do? What's your collaborative with them? So basically for the, for the last years, we have been in not only educating, but also doing the, the actual enrollments. So we have counselors that go out to different areas of the county, or they come here to the to the center at Unidos para la Musica, and we do the enrollment. Okay. So you know because we have strong grassroots in the community because we're active, you know, with the food bank, uh, with Cricket Wireless. You know, we're different cities of the county. Um, that relationship with them has worked, um, you know, perfectly fine because we don't just cover one city. We, we move around and, and, and that's the beauty of the food bank in, in a way because uh, we have the, mo the mobile unit that goes around to different uh, in different cities upon request okay. or upon partnership. <coughs> um, you know, so whenever we go to um, Redlands or we go to Highland, um, you know, we take a, you know, uh, the opportunity to also promote and and you know spread the you know it, it, all the information that families need to know about medical perhaps right. and it's the various resources right so it's not just you know when they're being affected by you know food insecurities they might be affected by health coverage of course so it's a foundation of all these resources and yeah. because you are like you mentioned that grassroots platform where you have built those relationships within the various communities it's very easy for you i could say that you know you and bring these two programs together right, right. For the greater good of the community. Right. Yeah, and you know when we uh, when we started Unidos por la Musica, we uh, you know uh, put in place those programs kind of to bounce from each other, um, because like you mentioned, you know when when you're not working, when you suddenly let, you know are being let go from work, now you're being affected, you know, and and the way you 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 buy food, right? You you face food insecurity, so now you're looking for that uh, assistance. So if you come to Unidos por la Musica, then now you can get groceries but then guess what you're not working no more so therefore you lost health coverage right so what do you do now especially if you're in the process of uh, getting a surgery or you're doing um you know uh, chronic disease or something like that so um so each program bounces from each other so we take the opportunity every time we go out and in, in, in the community with the food bank to bring all the resources that we have in place and, and or to share all the resources that we know that other partners just have. Right. That's amazing. You know, I, again, every time I talk to you, it almost seems like I learned something new of something that you're empowering our community. And, and, and for me, again, working with the underserved community is something dear to my heart, which brings me to my next question, your LULAC partnership. So right. LULAC is a national organization that is advocacy for our Latino community. Right. And really not just our Latino, just our underserved community in right. general and fights for the justice right. of people and what's not being done correctly for right. um, certain people of color sometimes. Right. And so you recently were received an award or a grant right. to help our underserved community. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we were uh, we saw the opportunity to apply to the LULAC grant and uh, Sembrando Comunidades, and, and it was it caught my eye. Um, and you know, I look into it, and we said, you know, we can apply for this. So, bottom line, we are we were funded to go out into the communities to educate Latinos about nutrition. Um, you know, nutrition and how do I apply for CalFresh or food stamps and how is that affecting my, my green card if I'm in a process or, um, you know, if I have a mixed family because sometimes, you know, well nowadays, you know, you, the parent might not be born in the U.S. but your kids are. Right. You know, can they qualify, f you know, because I'm not a U.S. citizen. So those are those are the questions that we see a lot in the community. So with right. this grant, we're 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 trying to clear the, that, you know, those those myths, you know, that confusion. So we're hosting workshops. Uh, we're doing uh, nutrition uh, segments as well, because uh, with this grant, we're going to be able to tailor to the needs of the families. But we don't just want to give the fish. Right. right. We want to help, you know, we want to teach you what to do with this food, you know, right. um, because sometimes you get uh, canned foods, right. you know, and as Latinos, we don't we don't like to eat canned foods right. because we believe that, you know, if I eat a lot of things that are in, in cans, it's going to lead to cancer right. or other, you know, disease and, and, you know, you know, you know, our Latinos, <laughs> you know, all these credences that we have right. in mind. So 
that, that grant, I'm excited about that grant. Uh, we're already uh, hitting the ground. We're gonna be doing that, uh, working with Lula for six months. So it's gonna go all the way into May of next year. And that's the purpose of that, that grant is to educate inform or Latino community and to guide them into the right channels of, you know, you know, full stamps, you know, CalFresh and, and other assistance. Right. And now I hear you. Um, I'm a national um, member of LULAC. And so I see and hear and always get information um, of the great work that they do mm -hmm. nationally. So to have that grant here for you, um, who is making a big impact in the IE, Congratulations. Thank you. We're really honored to be part of the LULAC movement, you know, the initiatives, you know. Um, it's not easy, you know, when you apply for a grant and certainly when you're applying to get funding, you know, from these well-known organizations such as LULAC, you know. When we got the news, we were jumping in the <laughs> office. We're like, oh my God, we're now part of the LULAC movement, you know. Right. And then, so we're super again, excited. as a Latino coming from Guadalajara right. and making this impact, and you know how... Um, You've been discriminated. Of course, um, many times. <laughs> exactly. So this is what they do. So it's it's great. It's great that they saw you know what you were doing in your community right. and decided to give you this award. So right. I'm excited for you. Thank you. And then when you were talking about canned foods and educating the community and how Latinos, you know, we don't like eating from the can. Right. And I know my dad was very much like that. You right. know. Um, now you have a partnership with. I am so happy with American Cancer Society. Right, right, right. Um, again, I work for American Cancer Society, so I'm biased with right. this. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so happy that you partner with us, yeah. you know, to make sure that, you know, you're educating people right. about cancer and yeah. tobacco and all, and the resources that are out there to protect yeah. themselves. Again, you know, what an honor to to pair or, or nonprofit with Cancer Society, you know, who doesn't know who Cancer Society right. is, you know, so. It's, it's an, an organization that has been in the community for many years, many years. So the fact that we're now be able to call each other's partners, um, we're excited. We are going to get into, you know, education, you know, um, you know, talking about breast cancer, smoking, mm -hmm. all of that, you know, that affects our communities, that affects our families, that we don't like to talk about it. Right. But in fact, that is, you know, that is a huge problem. Uh, it's a big problem issue uh, among the Latinos you know there's a, a lot of people that are still smoking right. and, uh, and nowadays with the whole the vaping you the know vaping. It, 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 is that better you know is it safe safer than smoking an actual cigarette you know what I mean so all those questions that they're they're there uh, I think we're going to be able to work and collaborate with uh, cancer society and be able right. to answer those questions right and you know what and I see a pattern here as you're talking I, I'm looking at a pattern with our Latino community education 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 right the stigmas mm -hmm. the el que dirán right. the, uh, mi tía me dijo que esto que el right. otro right? right um but not really knowing the facts right. and going based on what someone told them right. um versus really knowing the facts and because of that they eliminate or they don't pursue these type of resources that are that they're eligible right. for right. right and so it takes us to covid Right. and vaccine right. and I know that you've also partnered with different organizations right. to continue spreading awareness especially yeah. right now that we are seeing the numbers jumping up right. again and the hospitals right. getting full right. and so tell us a little bit about your efforts what you've done right. and what now you're doing um, moving forward right well we're still working with with the local partner and in, in here in the city of Ontario uh, Southern California uh, with the local clinic, uh, Appland Ontario Clinic, okay. and every time we we, we have families um, reaching out to us and asking where can I get a free vaccine or where can I get my booster, we, you know we refer them to that specific clinic. Um, but right now we're working with vaccine for uh, all 58. Mm -hmm. You know that's a campaign again. You know just um, talking to the community about the safety. You know uh, th that it is. You know, once once you get your vaccine, you know, a lot of people safety is the, the biggest thing around that subject. You know, it's a it's a safe. Um, am I gonna turn into a monster? Right. You know, am I gonna have any side effects in the long run? You know, so um, and and those questions are valid. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's just like me and everybody else watching, you know, we're still scared. Mm -hmm. You know, and we want to make sure that whatever action we take is the right one. So that campaign, it's again, it's all about education. 
you know, it's all, it's all about safety practices, you know, it's all about breaking those myths, breaking, you know, giving the, the community the trust that if we want to, you know, end this pandemic, if we want to see numbers go down, we all have to do a part. And, yeah. and the only way we're going to come forward is if you feel comfortable, if you're if you have a, a lot of knowledge to say, OK, based on this knowledge that I gather from this non-profits from Unidos por la Musica, now I can make a decision to go and get my booster or get my first dose, you know, because right. there's a lot of Latinos uh, still in the community that they didn't make it to the finish line. Right. You know, and that's concerning. Right, right. No, I hear you. And so what is your relationship currently or has been in the last quarter with IHP? Um, they, they're another great partner. We have collaborated with them in, other pro in many projects since I can remember, you know, 2014, 2015. So, um, but now we're working again, and and uh, and this new new new, uh, new project, we are a, an ambassador for IHB again nice. to go out to the community to inform um, about vaccine. And so, what we're doing with that, we are uh, we were able to um, get counselors into different senior apartment complex in, in the county where they're there every week uh, with uh, a lot of resources from food from vaccine from um enrolling into you know medical medi medi all of that so uh we were uh, selected as an ambassador for ihp and again we're going to be working with them for six months and and the purpose of that that project is for our counselors to be active in the community um informing promoting all about vaccines for COVID. It just sounds like you're like a one-stop shop, right? Of all these pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, which is amazing because they all connect with each right. other, right? Right. Especially our senior community, right. they're most vulnerable right now. Um, they're afraid to come out again. The way situations are, you know, to go out and expose themselves right. because. They're so vulnerable. Right. So you going to them is right. such an amazing um, partnership, right. you know, with right. all these resources that right. perhaps they might not know, but now can take advantage right. of. And that's the beauty of Unidos por la Musica. If you cannot come to us, we'll, we'll come to you, yeah. you know? <laughs> and again, with the mobile unit of the, the Hunger Mobile, we, I like to call it, you know, we've been everywhere in the, in the IE, from Needles to Victorville to Adelanto. Um, you know, as long as there's the partnership, as long as there's the funding, will be there right right and i see you i mean you're, we're talking about the inland empire but i have seen you expand to la county right. and i think i even heard in your christmas toy giveaway that you're expanding to las vegas right right yeah well we have a branch in las vegas that opened right in in, in the mix of the pandemic so uh -huh. we couldn't fully launch it um but it's open that branch in las vegas um we have a, a great partners in that in that community as well it's a small office okay. and, and, and satellite and satellite uh -huh. office it's a small satellite office in, in las vegas but um but the idea the 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 plans the idea is the same yeah the idea is the mm -hmm. same and the plans are 2023 to keep expanding that the branch right and you know before we move on to the concerts right. and all the fun things that you have been doing with the community the last portion of the programs you offer at Unidos, which is attorneys, abogados. Right, right. So tell us about how that ha it's been going in the last quarter. Right. So we're still working with an uh, with a local attorney who is doing a pro bono, uh, you know, here in the community of Ontario, and it's going great. You know, we're we've been able to uh, get uh, people apply for their green card. Now they're in the process. Visa U. Um, we have been able to host uh, workshops in Highland just again to just inform the, the community. You know, there's a lot of miscommunication when it comes to immigration. You know, if I go to Ciudad Juarez, you know, w once you're in that process of getting the green card, if I go to Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, which is a requirement, do I come back? And you know, I heard that you know you don't come back that you gotta you know you're gonna stay there right. for years. Right. You know, so all those you know myths and stories. You know, again, you know, uh, you know if your case it's different than mine you know right. just because you went to in, the, in that process and and, and and you ended up staying there for three a month 
you know, and, and that seed in Mexico doesn't mean that that's gonna happen to me. So yeah. again, with that program, case by case. yeah, it's case by case, and and again, you know, it's all education. But you know, we're blessed to be working with you know, with a local attorney who is willing to help our community. So you know, and the idea is that we want to prep or or Latinos who are already you know being a green card holder for many years to become U.S. citizens because again, elections are are coming up. You know, we gotta vote. Uh, we got to change the system. If, if you want to see change in your community and your nation, it takes action. Right. You know, sometimes we like just to complain. We like to complain and cry about things. But what are we doing to make that change? So um, so that's that's the focus in, in, in 2023 with our program. We want to, again, just get people involved, you know, and, and you know, it, it, it's time for you. Yeah. La hora es, yeah, you know, yeah. es hora de yeah. ser ciudadano. Um, you know, uh, Biden is changing some of the laws. They're just trying to see if, you know, they're gonna change the, um, you know, when you're taking the test, uh, the oral portion of mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're trying to make it more accessible for, for Latinos. That's, so that's great news and we're hoping the Congress and, you know, they will pass whatever it is that Biden is, is promoting. It's not promoting, but um, proposing that it's gonna help our community as well. Right. And no, I, I see that, I see, um and I agree completely with you. You know, there's the, again, it's just bad information right. out there. Bad information, people run with it instead right. of saying, you know what, let me just pick up the phone and right. call. So how does the community get in touch? What is the process to set up an appointment with an attorney? It's it's, um, it's easy. All you got to do is call, call the center, um, you know, do an assessment. It, first, it, it's an intake for it's an assessment and, it, and, and it, it's also an intake form so okay. we you know we will add, you know the, the assistant to the attorney will ask you questions you know where are you applying you know uh, you know your background all of that mm -hmm. and then once we have all the info then the attorney will review it and say yes you do have a case we can move forward and then you meet with the attorney and then from there we start the process is there any cost for them uh, right now, there's a, a, a there's a, a small fee. I don't mm -hmm. know the number, but you're more than welcome to call the center. Um, you know, which the number is it's here in, in, in the screen in the bottom. Um, but if we get funding, then you know we're gonna be able to waive those fees. Perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. So now that we covered all the programs. Let's get to the real fun part. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love and I like. I know, I see you glow every time we talk about this. So last time that we sat here, we were introducing the amazing news of a collaboration with Bobby D Presents right, right. and having not one, but two Banda MAS concerts. Right. So here we are this quarter, those two concerts happen. Tell us more about it. It was surreal to be at the arena to, to be able to witness that two nights sold out and and just to just just like i picture back in 2011 when we started um you know unidos por la musica and said you know the dream is to be at the arena with sold out concerts and we accomplished that yeah. um so it was uh, you know refreshing it was really exciting to see that um you know and 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 it's really um you know, it just gives gives Unidos, the team, a lot of hope, for, not just for us, but for the community, because, you know, it's more funding, and then, you know, with more funding, then you can do a lot more things, right? But, mm -hmm. so we were really excited to to be able to, and, and, and grateful and, and blessed with Bobby D to, to say yes to this partnership with Unidos por la Musica, because he's a businessman, and he gets a lot of, I'm yeah. pretty sure he gets a lot of proposals from yeah. many organizations, and the fact that he said, Let's do it with Unidos por la Musica. Um, that is something that we were, we are gonna forever gonna be grateful for, and and that partnership is gonna carry on into 2023. You I know? was just gonna ask you, yeah. do you foresee any yeah. partnerships and, and in the it future? Yes, and it gets better because um, you didn't even know this, and I always share with you things. <laughs> but, um, so we're gonna start doing um, concerts at a national level. With wow! WB. So what that means for the community is that we're going to be uh, able to open uh, scholarships and DACA national. Wow, So, um, So stay posted because uh, once we're able to um, secure the first concert, well, which is a, 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 it's already um, happening, we're, we're hosting an R&B concert at Colorado March 3rd. So stay posted for more, more news, more, more info about that. But, um, I, you know, since we're going to go national with concerts now, you know, the board, we decided that we're going to we're going to open scholarships across nations. So every students are, are able to apply. 
it gives me an opportunity to travel now. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Let's go to Colorado. It's yeah. a traveling. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's amazing. And I also saw that Bobby D, again, his giving spirit, right? Right. So he also was a sponsor um, at this. Christmas toy giveaway. Right, right. He was part of the, the toy giveaway. And, and this year, uh, our toy giveaway um, um, was a, a great uh, blessing for for the entire community, not just for, for the IE, but also for LA County in San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm. So we were able to do three uh, three giveaways this year and for a total of 2,000 toys. Wow. So, um, and, and the one here in Ontario, we have Marjorie de Sosa which we're blessed with her and she brought her baby as well. Yeah, right. So that was that was so cute to see the baby. I it, keep hearing their song, yeah. the, the song that she recorded right, the Yeah, baby, the Christmas, huh? yeah. So <laughs> la, la Alegria de la Navidad, something uh -huh. like that. And then Norma Torres, or Congresswoman, was, yes. was present to award uh, Marjorie and the baby a certificate for, for giving back to the community. That was special. Um, so that was really special. So, uh, and Thanksgiving, you know, we did it with Ninel Conde. That was an, yeah. another amazing event with Jenny 69, you know, and again, you know, a lot of people ask why do you involve our you know artists in these events well because we want to be um we want to be able to expand our mission you know we want to amplify who we are and what we do and the ie because again you know like i always say you know uh, the ie county uh, is 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 the one that gets the less attention compared to la county correct everything happens in la county all the great news all the great artists so but even the funding right even the funding yeah. but now with bobby d you know right. he's changing the culture in, in the ie i remember the arena back in 2012 13 it was dead there was right. no latino concerts and so now that bobby isn't there you know it has definitely shape the grounds and i like that you know because it's a latino making you yeah. know making change having a huge impact in the he community he has sold out after right. sold out concert after sold right. out here at the toyota right. arena right yeah so we're we're really excited you know with all these um partnerships that we have all these artists um thanksgiving you know more than 500 families were blessed with turkeys and if you divide that by eight you know that's 4,500 meals right. for Thanksgiving and right. uh, and again Christmas we did 2,000 toys in the city of San Fernando Valley, Pacoima and also here in Ontario so that was another mm -hmm. Great blessings for the communities, and just thank you know all the volunteers, the staff, the the sponsors, you know the everyone that donated, that put their heart in these events. It, it was amazing, and, and and it was the perfect way to close the year. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And the two events that you had here in Ontario, you had a collaboration partnership with the Hispanic Chamber of mm -hmm. Commerce here in Ontario. So right. how was that partnership? Amazing, you know, it was, um, you know, it was. Um, you know, it was already, yeah, you know, we needed to do that, you know, the right. partnership. You Latinos know. together, I businesses know, together, right? Um, you know, we were, we were talking about that partnership for years and, and, and it, it was just not happening. And, and finally, someone that I know here, you know, say, hey, you guys got to make it happen. You guys got to collaborate, come together. And, and, and we did. And it was a beautiful yeah. partnership. So I foresee working with them again for Cinco de Mayo next year for Fiestas Patrias and, and see other events that we can collaborate because they're all about um workshops to empower local businesses right. you know expos they want to do that so i met with uh, senor rojas who is the founder and he wants to focus on that so we want to see if there's a, a you know a small window opportunity for us to collaborate with them on the, uh, on that aspect right <sighs> It seems like, you know, we have this time, right. but yet we still can't cover everything. We can go but... on and on and on and on. <laughs> right, it just feels that way. But again, it's always a pleasure, Oscar. You're doing amazing things. Thank you, Selena. I'm glad to be here to close out 2022 with you. And I look forward to what 2023 is going to bring for us. Same most here. Especially if we're going national. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are. Thank God. But... um. No, um, I just want to say thank you to all the community for the support given to Unidos por la Musica this 2022. All the sponsors, all the volunteers, all the community partners, uh, you know, everyone that has come to this center to say, hey, how can we make a difference? Hey, how can we help? How can we collaborate? I just want to say thank you on behalf of my team and my board members. Thank you for helping us make a difference in your community. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Selena. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>